creating reports inside of Salesforce. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do exactly that. I'll be covering filters, columns, grouping, filter logic, and also how to create charts from your reports as well. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help with Salesforce at all, check out the link below, we would love to help. But as you can see here, I am on the Salesforce homepage. Now I'm gonna swiftly redirect to the reports area. Now this is at the top using the navigation bar. As you can see, I've got a few recent reports. Now the first thing we wanna do if we're creating a report is press the new report button in the top right hand corner. So go ahead and press new reports. Now there are loads of options to choose from. We can create reports for every single custom object inside of your Salesforce system, including accounts and contacts, opportunities, cases, leads, campaigns, so on, so forth. In this example video, because I can't cover everything unfortunately, I'm gonna create a report for our opportunities. So I've selected the opportunities option on the left hand side here, which is defined by category. And then you can see we've got a lot of opportunity report type options. Now these different options give us re different reporting types. So you can see we've just got the opportunities report. That means I'm just reporting on opportunities. But if we've got opportunities with contact roles, with partners, that is to do with the relationship. So opportunities with the relationship to contact roles, I then wanna report on both of those. So that will give you access to contact role data associated with opportunities that you can then report on. I know that's a bit of a mouthful, it's slightly more advanced. So in this video, I'm literally just gonna select the opportunities area. But if I go to like leads, for example, you can see we've got leads and then we've got leads with converted information. So if you wanna track leads with convert that have also been been converted as well as outstanding or live leads then you would select leads with converted lead information but that's just as an example if i head back to the opportunities area i'm going to go ahead and select our opportunities type and then all i need to do is press the start report button and that is going to give us the basis for our report so you can see here firstly i want to work through the columns of our report so up the top here we've got all of these different columns and this is showing us lots and lots of different data about all of our opportunities. We can change these columns to suit whatever we wanna see. Firstly, before you do that, I would recommend just unticking the update preview automatically option in the top right hand corner, because as you work through the different column options, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, it can really slow down your computer. So just untick that for the time being, we are gonna turn it back on in a moment. But we can now work through all of the columns we do and do not want to see for our opportunities. So for example, if I do not want to see owner role or opportunity owner, let's say I want to keep account name, opportunity name, stage, I don't care about the fiscal period, I don't care about the age, let's say I don't care about the next steps, and then I want to move the created date to the bottom, so it repositions here, as you can see, all I now need to do is just press the refresh button and that will update our columns. Now you can go ahead and add additional columns by using the search up the top here, but also you can press this arrow on the far left hand side where it says fields, and then you'll literally have every single field and you can go ahead and just double click. So if I double click employees, that should hopefully now add, as you can see, that as a column, but I can remove that as well if I'd like to. So that's an option for you as well. And then just press the refresh button. Obviously nothing has changed. Now we've updated our columns area. I would urge you to now go ahead and turn back on update preview automatically as the things we're gonna be doing now are not as complex and therefore are not gonna take up too much of your computer's brain space. So I'm then gonna direct over to the filters area. So. Up the top, we've got outline, which is columns and group rows, which I will come back to in this video, but we then have filters. Now filters in a nutshell is essentially enabling us to filter our report to only show us specific opportunities that match the filter criteria that we define. We've got loads of different filter options. By default, you're gonna have show me, close date, opportunity status, and probability. Now quite often, often not quite often, quite often, for the show me, it will be selected as my opportunities. Now you may want to change that, especially if you're in management to all opportunities or maybe my team's opportunities. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna select all opportunities and press apply. And then you might wanna change the close date. Now at the moment, I, this is a demo system. We do not actively use this system for obvious reasons. Um, 
Now, I have not got any opportunities closing in the current financial quarter. So what I can do is on the close date, select this, and then I've got two options. I can either keep the existing date column and just change the range, or I can go to the actual date column and maybe I wanna change this to created date, for example. And then I might wanna keep the range or I might select all time or I can select a custom option or that Salesforce provide a number of options like list options that we have here. Again, for the sake of this video, being a demonstration video, I'm just gonna select all time and press apply. And you can see here, we now have a number of opportunities that have populated, okay? I now wanna go ahead and add some filter criteria, and then I'm gonna go on to some filter logic. So opportunity status, I wanna keep as all, and probability, I also wanna keep as all. But I only want to see the type business, so column type, that is equal to new business. So what I would do is I would go add filter, I would then search the column, so type in this instance, press type, and then I wanna choose my operator. So, few options for operator dependent on the field type. In this instance, it's a pick list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select equals to, or you could select not equals to and just reverse engineer this. But I'm gonna select equals to, and then I'm just gonna say new business. So I only want to see opportunities that are equal to the type new business, and then go ahead and press apply. And that is gonna filter down all of my opportunities, okay, as you can see here. So now I just have the opportunities that are equal to new business. And then if I'd like to, I can go ahead and add another filter. So let's say I just want to see, um, go to lead source, for example, and I just want to see the lead source opportunities that are equal to advertisement and web. So if I then go to add filter lead source, and then I'm going to again have the operator, leave it as equals again, because this is a pick list. And then I'm going to go ahead and select lead source. If I scroll down, I should be able to see it. Lead source is equal to advertisement, and also I wanna select the web option. But again, you can do this for any report that you're running, same principle applies. So now we've whittled our opportunities down using even more filters. Now the final thing that I wanna show you on the filters area is using the filter logic. So let's say you've got three filter types and you wanna do a one and two or three. I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do that. So one and two, and then what you wanna do is open a bracket by two, press space or, and then let's say three, and then close bracket. So what this filter logic is gonna say is, is equal to one and two or, or three. Doesn't matter which one, but two or three. You can apply the same for open bracket one or two, and then go space and three, depending on how you set up your filters. So you can do that as well. But in this instance, I'm just gonna run one or two and then go ahead and press apply. So what I'm telling the report is I want to see opportunities that match equal to new business or lead source is equal to advertisement and or web. So one of those two. So those are your filters. That's how to add filter logic as well. Hopefully that's useful. You can go ahead and apply these to your reports. Now I'm gonna show you some more advanced things with the reporting. If we head back to the outline area, we can now go ahead and group our, uh, group our opportunities by a particular field. Now in this instance, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group our opportunities on this particular report by created date, just for a simple example. So if I just go ahead and search created date, this will now show me all of the opportunities created by date. So it's actually grouping them by date. Now this may seem a little bit annoying because it's giving me the 23rd of the 3rd, 23rd of the 3rd, 2022, and then it's giving me the 27th of the 5th, 2022. But let's say we wanna change this to month. What we do is go to the arrow here and then just group date by, and then we can go ahead and change this to calendar month, and then it will change to March, May, March, July, and this is a much easier way of seeing all of your opportunities. Now, this is gonna vary dependent on what you're grouping your opportunities or grouping your report by, but there will be options like that on the drop-down menu available. So go ahead and have a look at them. You can also sort ascending, descending, or sort by alternative options. If I just click away from that, press sort by create a date or record count as well. So bear that in mind. Um, and then the final thing I'm gonna show you is grouping. So we can group rows and then we can group columns. So within a row, you may have columns that you wanna group by, and I'll show you how this is actually portrayed in the charts towards the end of this video. 
But if I go ahead and group columns, and in this example, I wanna group our opportunities by lead source. I'm then gonna go ahead and search lead source and select. So now what we've got is we have grouped our row by the date in which the opportunity was created. And then we have grouped our columns by the lead source. You can see here, we've got advertisement three, social one, and we can see by month, the number of opportunities we were getting by lead source. This is quite complicated stuff. Um, you may wanna start off with the earlier part of this video. However, there, this can be applied to everything inside of Salesforce, all of your different custom objects. You can group rows, group columns, you can get really sophisticated with your reporting. So I'm hoping this is gonna give you a good insight into what is possible. So now I've created our example report for this video, and now I wanna go ahead and create some charts. So what I would traditionally do is save this, um, to make sure we don't delete anything. And then I'll go ahead and press the run button. So save and run or save and then run, up to you. <laughs> it doesn't matter either way. But I'm gonna go ahead and press run. And you can see here, this is now given us what we've just seen on the back end, so where we were able to edit it. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a chart. So in the top right hand corner, you go ahead and select the add chart option. And this is where we can go ahead and add our chart. So as you can see, we've got this um, bar graph that is horizontal. Yes, horizontal, not vertical, vertical's up. Um, but we can change this however we like. So if we go to the chart properties cog on the far right hand side here, we've got bar, column, donut, line, funnel, scatter, plot. We've also got stack bar and stacked column. Now you will only have access to stack bar or stack column if you are grouping both columns and grouping rows. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. So if I just select column, we can see we've got number of opportunities per month. So record count on the left hand side per month just being displayed in our chart. Now, if I then select stacked column, we can go ahead and stack our opportunities. So it's grouped column by when it was created and grouping the row by the lead source. So you can now see that we have had six opportunities in March of 2022. Um, and three of those were from advertisement. One of those was from social and two of those were from the web, or the web, the web, the web as the lead source. But we can change this and how it's presented using the options on the right hand side here. So the X axis could either be create date or lead source. And then the Y axis is always gonna remain as record count unless you're using let's say an amount um, an amount, like a value, like a number, for example. And then you can select what you stack it by. Now, it wouldn't really make much sense to reverse this. If I change this to lead source and then stack by created date, it would look very, very weird. But you have the option to do so. If I then went back to our column, you could probably change the X axis from created date to lead source. And that would show us the number of opportunities by lead source. We can also add a reference line. So if I wanna add a reference line of, let's say um, five here, that will then add the reference line on our graph. So then we know where our targets are, just as an example. Um, and then we can show values as well as a select option. So that will just add the value at the top. You can see 811, if I unselect that, that will hide those numbers. Um, but the report that I was actually trying to create was a stacked column showing the X axis being the created date stacked by the lead source. Um, and that was the report that I was trying to create for this example video. Hopefully, and I know this has been very detailed, but hopefully that has given you an insight in how to do reporting inside of Salesforce. There's a lot to learn here, and this is only one example I can give you. There are loads of examples of reports. You can go as crazy as you like with the custom objects in the reporting or the standard objects inside of Salesforce as well. But hopefully you're familiar with the basics. I think the key takeaways are the columns using the filters and the filter logic. And then hopefully you understand the basics of grouping rows and columns as well. And then finally, how to set up these graphs, which is ultimately what everyone wants to see at the end of a report. Thank you ever so much for watching. Like I said, if you do need any help with Salesforce, check out our link below. We'd be delighted to help. We do implementation uh, of Salesforce systems and a little bit of training, very rarely, but we do do that as well. Uh, either way, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll hopefully be speaking to you very soon. Thank you and goodbye.